This is Mark A. Gunnels. You're here with the Being Great podcast with your host, Mark A. Gunnels. I'm here with my special guest today, Darren Smith from Fox Sports. How you doing, man? Doing good, my man. Doing good. Happy to see you here. And uh, yeah, man, I'm glad we're able to, to uh, make this happen for you tonight. Yeah, most, def- most, most definitely. I appreciate you a lot. Uh, appreciate everybody tuning in right now. I want everybody to know the purpose of this podcast is to... I'm doing it for the culture, man. I just want everybody to tap in. Give me your opinions. I know that there's always a lot of talk and discussions going on on my Facebook statuses and whatnot. So I decided to give you guys a platform to talk to me right here. We're even taking phone calls later as well. But uh, let's dive right into it. We're going to talk about Chris Paul. Chris Paul, the other day, was traded to the Houston Rockets for about pretty much everybody on their roster except James Harden. The Houston Rockets sent Patrick Beverly, Lou Williams, Sam Decker, Harrell, Darian Hilliard, DeAndre Liggins, Kyle Wilcher, and a protected first round pick and cast considerations to the Clippers for Chris Paul. My initial reaction was, wow, because James Harden played point guard this past season. He led the league in assists, but he did lead the league in turnovers as well. So I believe that it might be a good fit, depending on if Harden is really willing to take a back seat, not per se as far as scoring, but just as far as holding the ball in his hands, because he had the ball in his hands pretty much the whole game. When you watch the Rockets play, especially in the playoffs, when he lost to the Spurs, he started to wear down in the playoffs the last fourth quarter of a game. He was wearing down. The Spurs just had too much depth. So I think adding Chris Paul is going to take a lot of pressure off of him and he'll be able to do what he does best, which is score the basketball. How do you feel about it? Well, I will tell you this. Uh, first of all, again, congratulations to you on your, on, uh, Thank on you. your new Appreciate podcast, it. my man. So it's uh, the so, so first step, you know, saying first of many for you. So um, I must say, as an as LU alum, man, I'm happy for you and and, uh, and glad that you invited me to be a part of this uh, for your mm-hmm. first show. No out. doubt, no doubt. Uh, well, here's the deal. One, it's a good addition. It's actually, and we're, we're going to talk about it momentarily, but it's, it's going to be a huge loss to the Clippers. But it, it is a big addition to the Rockets. Uh, as you mentioned before, you saw in the playoffs, especially when they played uh, 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 Oklahoma and then the other team. I, I the believe, Spurs. The Spurs. The biggest thing was the amount of time that James Harden had the ball in the course uh, the percentage of shots that he took versus the rest of the teammates, and of course, the amount of offense that he took, uh, well, the the amount of offense that that he has for that team. With Chris Paul there, you have someone <laughs> that will help him out defensively because he's not known. Uh, James Harden is not known as a good defender, so you have someone that will play the point that is a proven leader. Uh, he'll be able to help defensively, and then you know you have people like Russell Westbrook, uh, Chris Paul, even. Even uh, uh, my guy from Steph Curry, yes, yeah, Steph, and, yeah, and yeah. Isaiah Thomas for sure. You have people like that who are shooting guards in a point guard body, and that's what James Harden is. And so this will allow him one. He'll he'll be he'll be well suited for the fourth quarter and overtime because he won't he won't have to expend so much energy trying to one dribble 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 and then find someone to you know get the ball out to or try to take that try to take the shot when the clock runs out. So I think that this is a good fit for them. Of course, uh, as we will, uh, you know, talk about whether or not they will be able to add a particular player to that roster that would help. But I like it. You know, now I would say I would have loved to have seen how someone like Dwight Howard would have been. You know, had he stayed. You know, had they not traded him 
or send him off to uh, Atlanta before he went yeah, to... Yeah, now uh, he's in Charlotte. Yeah, now he's in Charlotte. <laughs> but he's with Jordan, so Jordan's going to be in that yeah. ass yeah, to make yeah, sure that yeah. you know he, he gets uh, he gets the most out of him. But that would have been good, but you just never know. So I like to, I, I'm looking forward to see how this uh, takes place. Yeah, and one thing about the Rockets, especially their, their general manager, Daryl Morey, he's the most aggressive guy in the league. I mean, he's a, he rolls the dice. I mean, he's a guy <laughs> that's not willing... He's not afraid to gamble, let's just say that. You know, and, and, and hate to jump in there, but... yeah. The head coach, Mike D'Antoni. Now, I want to see how he and Chris Paul mesh because Chris Paul is a leader and he's a coach of floor general on the floor. But I want to see how that type of offense with Chris Paul leading it, you know, because it's different when you got James Harden, who is the offense, and now you got to somehow mold Chris Paul into the type of offense that you want him to run on the court. And like you said, it will be a good, um, it will be a good. Well, I like this kind of stuff. I mean, we talked about it before we went on here. I like quote unquote super teams. And granted, it's only two players, but you never know who they can add to it. But just seeing how certain talents mesh with each other, you know, this is a backcourt that I could see Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumars. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned Mike D'Antoni because he has an offense where he wants to shoot the ball in seven seconds or less. Uh, he likes ball of movement. And Chris Paul, all, although be it, he's a great passer, he's a great playmaker, he does have a knack for pounding the ball into the ground for about 15 to 20 seconds before making a play. So it's going to be interesting to see how he buys into the ball of movement, everybody touch the ball, spread it around type of system. But I do believe since he's older, he's 32 years old, he hasn't won a ring yet, <laughs> I think he's willing to take a back seat a little bit and coexist with a guy like a James Harden and maybe a third piece if they get like a Melo or Paul George, which we'll talk about later. Man, people, trust me, <laughs> people on my own page was uh, jumping me about Melo and my feelings about him, so yeah, I'll well, share that a little bit we'll later. We'll get some we'll Melo later for sure <laughs> towards the end of the show. But um, let's talk about the Clippers, Doc Rivers mm. in particular, because... Mm. He's the main reason why Chris Paul wanted to get out of L.A. Because if you don't know, Chris Paul loved L.A. I mean, he loved the culture. He was supposed to be a Laker at first, and then he went to the Clippers. <laughs> yeah, so, you can thank David Stern for yeah, that one. Yeah, he definitely embraced the L.A. vibe. But according to reports from ESPN, Chris Paul was pushed away from Doc Rivers because Doc Rivers was kind of being biased towards his son. Uh, the reports saying that, Doc yeah. Rivers would yell at guys for certain things, but if Austin Rivers did the same exact thing, he wouldn't get on him about it. But not even to mention that, another factor is, you know, Doc Rivers is the basketball, he's the president of basketball operations, so he can decline trades. And there was a trade on the table last year involving Rivers, which it would have sent Rivers, Jamal Crawford, and I believe J.J. Redick to New York for Carmelo Anthony, and Sasa Vujicic. Exactly. And he declined that. And that was kind of the <laughs> final straw for Chris Paul. Because as you know, he's part of the banana boat four with LeBron, Melo, and Wade. So he would have loved to play with Melo. And he still might get his chance in Houston. But the fact that Doc Rivers declined that trade for him to come to L.A., Chris Paul said, hey, I got to get out of here. Yeah, this isn't a good look for, for, uh, for Doc Rivers. You know, he hasn't won a title since the... Uh, the the remix version of the Big Three back in 2008 with uh, Ray Allen, uh, KG, as well as uh, Paul Pierce, and so you know this is a lot of responsibilities, and this is this is one of the main reasons why I don't like head coaches being a team president or general manager because you're taking on too much, and when you're taking on both hats like that, and both hats are full time gigs. I mean, you just see you don't see it that often in football anymore, in, in pro football. Uh, and rarely do you see it in basketball right now that you have someone that's taken on those, those two um, those two titles. And because of those responsibilities, I think that it's taken away from what he's doing on the court. And with that, the added effect, of course, you having your son, you signing your son uh, to, a, you know, one, you signing your son to a contract to begin with. You know, that's going to raise some eyebrows because you're giving your son money and it's kind of keeping the money in-house in a way. So, um, so that's an issue there. But then when you add that on top of the fact that you know, coaching and stuff like that, when you're yelling at the players, and if it's true, and a lot of people said that it is true, that, uh, uh, that he, you know, that he treats his son differently, I mean, the whole team will revolt against you. And there is truth to that because as if you watch uh, FS1, uh, shout out to Fox Force 1, <laughs> but if you, if, if, if you watch um, 
uh, undisputed with Skip and Shannon. Uh, Eddie Long has been on has been on has been on the show as a guest. Used to play for Doc Rivers in both uh, uh, Boston as well as uh, the Clippers, and you know he he's made he's made overtures that that is a big reason why people are kind of disgusted with Doc in that area is because of his son. I'm not sure whether or not his son is. I don't think his son's a bad person. But I just I just think it's just the appearance of his son being on the team and maybe taking an opportunity that they feel could be better for someone. I, I guess if he was still playing for another team, it wouldn't be an issue. But because he's playing for that team and your father makes a decision and playing time and stuff like that, I think that's where the issue lies. Yeah, even Glenn Big Baby Davis has came out and had a little war of words oh, with God. Austin yeah, I Rivers. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, but let's shift gears here before we go to a break. Paul George. Mm. Now, this guy's been on the trade block for about 10 years. <laughs> it feels like it. I mean, the guy, <laughs> we keep seeing rumors about him. He's going to go here. He's going to go there. Nothing's happened yet. But the Pacers GM, Kevin Pritchard, is very, very adamant that he will be traded sometime before training camp. <clears throat> so the main options as of right now, that's realistic. You got the Spurs. Mm. The Celtics, even though Danny Age is scared to pull the trigger, <laughs> the Cleveland Cavaliers, and the Lakers, but the Lakers are kind of waiting for him to reach free agency, which is risky because if Paul George goes to one of those previous three teams and gets a taste of winning, who's to say he's going to leave that next summer when he comes a free agent? So the Lakers, they might have missed their chance by not trying to trade that second overall pick, which I wouldn't have done, by the way, because I love Lonzo Ball. But if Chris, let's just say Paul George goes to the, the Cavs. If he goes to the Cavs and goes to the finals, let's say they win. It's, <laughs> let's say they win. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I can't believe you said that. Go ahead. Do me off. <laughs> I'm just saying, hypothetically, let's say they beat the Warriors next year. He gets a taste of winning. LeBron, Hypothetically, the Chiefs will win the Super Bowl, baby. <laughs> but let's go. Well, Chiefs can't even get to the Super Bowl, first of all. <laughs> but uh, let's say the Cavs win this, the finals next year. LeBron attends the stay. Is Paul George going to leave that? And not even that. Let's just say he goes to the Spurs or even the Rockets. I forgot to mention the Rockets. The Rockets are trying to get him as well. If he goes to one of those teams and goes to the conference finals or even the finals and loses, for him to get a taste of that, I can't see him wanting to leave that and go to the Lakers. That's a team that's in rebuild mode, unless they bring another star with him. Well, this is what I'll say about that. Uh, one, for him to get to Cleveland, they have to work out a trade with Kevin Love. I don't see that happening. It'll have to be a three-team three yeah, deal. I, and, and I don't see that happening because it hasn't happened yet. There were reports there were a five-team involved where, the key, yeah, where yeah. Cleveland would have gotten both Carmelo as well as uh, uh, Paul George. So, Let's say worst comes to worst, he gets traded, and it, and ends up in which city do you want to go with? Let's say no. Let's just say Cleveland, because realistically, okay. Cleveland's going to be the okay. best team okay. with a chance to uh, face Golden State next season in the NBA Finals. Even if he does that, Cleveland cannot offer him a max deal, and so because of that, that is the reason why he would be a one and done in Cleveland. And I can assure you. Uh, you know, as, as teams get older, LeBron will want to win. He won't go back to Cleveland after next year. I mean, one, you know, there was something that took. Are you talking about Paul George or LeBron? Both of them. Okay. Yeah, they both both would not both would uh, be out of Cleveland if if Paul George ended up there. Now, if if they were to end up there, I do see him going back to Lakers because he's he's intent on going to Los Angeles one way or the, uh, one way or another. If Los Angeles trades for him, that's because they, you know, they want to get some people off of their books, and this and the, and you can you can trade for him, Paul George now, and still have money for next year to re-sign him to a max deal, as well as have money set aside for another max deal player, which would be they would go after someone like LeBron or Clay Thompson or someone like that. So that's how I mean that's how the Lakers are looking at at, at viewing it. Uh, if they were to get Paul George now. If not, they were still trying to trade some players to lighten the load off. That's that's why they got rid of Moscow. They were able to get rid of that, and that, that was a big contract, a wasted contract. They were they were able to get off their books. So you get rid of uh, so you get rid of him, and now you got money for two max players for LeBron, uh, Paul George, or someone else. Granted, and they're still trying to get Luau Dang off yeah, their books too. Then granted, you would want to get him for free, but if you can get Luau, like you said, Luau Dang, some people off the books now and get him a year earlier. 
why not? Why not make that move? Yeah, but that's the thing. I don't be. I don't believe the Lakers have the pieces now to pull off a trade for him at this point. And oh, they have the yeah. I mean, they have the, I mean, unless they do a three team deal. Well, and, well, there's always draft picks too. I mean, so you you, you got to remember they have money on their books to take care of Paul George in, in a regular trade. Yeah. They just have to get rid of one, one maybe two bodies, and be willing to give up some draft picks. Yeah, but I'm saying though, this year the Lakers did offer. They offered their they had a 27th, the 28th, and Julius Randle, and I believe it was Jordan Clarkson. Yeah, but the Pacers and, wanted their second pick, and they wouldn't they wouldn't give that. Yeah, up. that's that's the thing. The Pacers are asking for a lot. Spe- Paul George is uh, good, but he ain't that damn yeah, good. Yeah, even uh, they're asking the Celtics. A report just came out that they want two first round picks from the Celtics because they have theirs. And well, they the have, Celtics now, have, now the Celtics have a lot of yeah, draft yeah, picks, so yeah. they could afford it, but. The problem with the Celtics is that you would only be – see, it's different because Cleveland, you can rent them, but if LeBron leaves, and you're basically rebuilding the team next year anyway, and then even if LeBron leaves, Kyrie's going to ask for a trade because he's yeah. not going to want to be there. Yeah. So Cleveland can afford because they can go all in for this season. Yeah, they have nothing to and lose. Try, yeah, they have nothing to lose yeah. versus Boston when you're trying to rebuild. And then, you know, that's a lot to give up even for one player – uh, you know, just to rent. Yeah. Especially if he's if he's not the quote unquote answer. One, you got to get past LeBron in Cleveland. If he can't do that, you damn sure not gonna get past Golden State. Yeah, but here's the thing with Boston though. They're not gonna make the trade because unless they get a commitment from Gordon Hayward, because there were reports months ago that Paul George would love to play with Gordon Hayward. They're great friends. Apparently, I didn't know about that. And if they get a commitment from him in free agency, because he know he used to play for Brad Stevens at Butler, so. That might be able to com- make him stay long term, possibly if they can get Gordon Hayward to commit. I wouldn't rule that out completely for Boston. Yeah, but here's the problem, man. And and I understand your theory, but and this is what I have to explain to people, man. LeBron just happens to be that much better than everyone in the on in the Eastern Conference. And granted, if they you- had Hayward and Paul George, that that's pretty. Comp- what did LeBron do to those teams in the playoffs? Yeah, but they didn't have they didn't have two other All Stars. If you have them two with Isaiah Thomas, that that's a team that could very well beat Cleveland. I'm not saying they would, but dude, they beat Cleveland without Isaiah Thomas. So they had four chances to beat them with Isaiah Thomas, and they couldn't do it. They beat them one time in the pre- and, and Isaiah was wasn't playing in that game. So Isaiah Thomas is not the answer. It's but I'm so saying, if, I'm saying if you add. Hayward and Paul George is going to make Isaiah T- Thomas game a lot Problem easier. Problem is with that is you got to get all of them to gel and mesh in 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 one season. Point. Now, now, granted, the NBA season is long because everybody thought that uh, Kevin Durant couldn't couldn't you know it was going to take a year. But that was different. That well, was no, seamless. Well, no, no, yeah. it, it was seamless when you look back at it in hindsight. But yeah, when yeah. he well, when he first got there, they were wondering because I mean even Draymond said that. It was up until Christmas that you know they were trying to figure out how to how to mesh uh, mesh Durant in because you know people were kind of succumbing their game to influence his and it wasn't until the loss against uh, against Cleveland on Christmas night that they said look you play your game we are gonna play our game I almost cussed but you know things are gonna <laughs> things are gonna work out and of course it ended up you doing already it. did earlier but it's okay <laughs> oh, no, I can you, know, you can say ass so. oh, okay well forget it. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is yeah. one. This is a podcast. It's on the air. Yeah. It's not. It's not FCC, so you can say whatever you want. I just try. I just try to try not to use the words that you don't use on the radio. So, yeah, we'll but you the, can we'll, say yes. We'll keep we'll keep the other stuff off. Yeah. <laughs> well, how about a break? You want to go to a break real quick? Man, nah, hell no. We don't have to. We good. I'm good. You good? I'm good. Sure. Right, let's, let's talk about some other all stuff. Right, let's go to the next topic then. Yeah, let's go. Let's talk about the NBA draft. Ah, the NBA draft. NBA draft. It was a week ago today. It was. It was. I remember that, too, because you were over here. We yeah. were watching it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <I laughs> we was were over doing here. some stuff. Yeah. yeah What's going yeah. on? So, so uh, the NBA thought? draft. I have my top five best fits. I like Markel Fultz in Philly. I know he's number one pick, but that's just a great fit, man, because you got Ben yeah. Simmons, who can. It's kind of similar to the Houston dynamic, but not quite because they haven't played yet in the NBA. But Ben Simmons, he can handle the ball. He's not a great shooter. But he's a playmaker. He's one of the best passers I've seen come in, come out of college in recent memory. And you got Markel Fultz, who's a straight scorer, and he can handle the ball at times as well. So they're going to feed off each other. And just imagine them pick and rolls with Joel Embiid. I mean, it's just going to create so much space. Man, all they you got to do is trip Joel Embiid. He'll be, he'll be hey, out man. for four or five <laughs> games, dude. Hey, when he's on the court, he's very good, but that's a 
when he's on the court. Big word, when. But I love that fit. I'm going with the top two picks here because I, <laughs> I love Lonzo Ball in L.A. That's a great fit because you got young guys like Jordan Clarkson, Julius Randle, uh, Brandon Ingram. If that guy can average close to 20 points a game, which I think he's capable of, and with Lonzo Ball there, it's going to just make things a lot easier for Ingram with a guy like Lonzo Ball because D'Angelo Russell was more of a scoring point guard. So when you got a guy like Lonzo, he's going to make everybody look better. So I love that fit, and especially with Luke Walton incorporating that kind of Warriors up-tempo system there. I love that fit. Well, I will say this, man. You... you uh... <laughs> You do want to be great, and I appreciate that. But I, I got to, I got to school you on a few things, man. First of all, oh, well, Markel Fultz has never has never been associated with being a winner. So if actually, you, up until he went to Washington in he, high school, he, he was a win, winner. He didn't win in high school. Well, he didn't win. I don't know if he won state, but he he won. He won games. He won games. Look, I'm not saying but that the kid went winless, but I mean, look, look who they had on Washington. He, he literally had matter. nothing to play with. Hell, Ben Simmons didn't have nothing to play with, and they didn't make the tournament either. So yeah, you're but, saying Ben Simmons isn't good? Well, no, I'm not going to say Ben Simmons isn't good, but there is a difference. I mean, they did have a winning record. Well, he had another Maidon Hall American on his team as well. Well, still. I, well, okay, but hold on. Look, Lonzo Ball, nobody heard of his teammates, but he made them all better. He broke record. That's not true, but I'll let you continue. Oh. T.J. Leaf was, uh, I believe, a five-star out of high school, and uh, they had... None of, them, none of them were NBA draft prospects until Alonzo came along. I'm pretty sure T.J. Leaf was. Okay. I'm pretty sure T.J. Leaf okay. was. Okay, And then the young Holiday, he was pretty, he's pretty good. Okay. And then uh, the coach's son, Offer, was one of the best shooters. And he's not an NBA prospect, but he was one of, known as one of the best shooters in the country. Now, I'm not saying he had a loaded team. He did make them better, obviously. I'm not disagreeing with that, but he didn't have nothing. He had way more to work with, with than Fultz did. Now you know what before before we even uh go further into the discussion, I, you know, people <laughs> a lot of people are commenting on Facebook. Okay. We will have a number to call in on. We just not yet, people, not yet, Miss Gabrielle. And uh, and I have to address uh, Adam because uh, Adam said that uh <laughs> that uh, uh Boston was a number one seed. I know they were number one seed. I said that was by default. I said, Hell, if, if Cleveland could have won sixty five games had they chose to not rest and do a whole <laughs> lot of things. Yeah. So so I mean it's 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 not an issue of whether or not uh, you get Hayward and Georgia, whatever, and they, and they can beat and they can beat uh, Cleveland. As long as LeBron James is healthy and in the East, they get a straight shot to the NBA Finals. I mean, it, 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 you know what? I'm not even going to. You see, Adams, you got me worked up. But let's get back to what we were talking about with the draft. Now, I'm going to give you my top five. I do like. I didn't get to finish mine yet. I, mean, I thought you did. No, I only did two. You interrupted me. Man, after. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Because <laughs> right. you did ask me about, about four. So All ahead. right. My third one is Josh Jackson in Phoenix. I love that fit. I well, mean. He, he should have been number one. That open system. You got Devin Booker. Yeah. They still got Eric Bledsoe. I mean, I just think he's just a great fit. I mean, the guy can play one through four. He's just going to run up and down the floor. He's just a great athlete. He can guard the one through four. He's just going to – he does it all, man. He's an underrated passer as well. That's one thing about his game people don't give him enough credit for. Uh, my fourth guy is Dennis Smith Jr. in Dallas. I love that fit. He's probably the most unappreciated guy that got picked in the top ten. Good. He kind of reminds me of Damian Lillard. He's a guy that can just give you buckets. And Dallas has been looking for a guy like that on the perimeter, and especially since – Dirk Nowinski's on his last leg. I really believe that they're going to be able to hand the keys to him there, and he's going to shine immediately. And then my sleeper guy, he went in the 20s, is Terrence Ferguson, the OKC. A lot of guys don't know about him. He committed to Arizona. He was a made All-American, but he ended up playing overseas instead of going to Arizona. He's a sharpshooter, very athletic. He's one of them guys that he could win a three-point contest and win a dunk contest. Like, he's that good shooting the ball, and he's stupid athletic. So I think he's a guy you can put on the wing with Westbrook and he's going to have an impact, at least off the bench, immediately. Okay. Well, you know, that's not a bad top five, but there's going to be two teams that I named that you're going to probably regret not having in your top five. Now, Okay. I do agree that Mark Falls to Philadelphia is quote-unquote box office. I want to see how they do. I want, I want Simmons and oh, Joe Joel and B to stay healthy. They can stay healthy, you know, there, there's a good chance that they could make a nice little splash. They're not going to go from worst to first or anything like that, and I don't think that they'll they'll, they'll be playoff ready because you know that young, nobody's been healthy. Got to get them to see how they can uh, uh, mesh well together. 
I am I am wondering because it is a different scenario than than uh, Chris Paul and James Harden as it relates to uh, Markel Fultz and, and Simmons because Simmons initially was going to be running the point point forward and unless something has changed I think that that's still the plan is to run the offense through him yeah that's still the and plan. then okay and then maybe have uh, have you know and then of course if he's on the bench then you can always run the offense through through. Uh, to uh, uh, Fultz. Yeah. Um, but that's not I, – I do like, obviously, Lonzo Ball going to the Lakers. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a hometown product, hometown kid. He has been trained. He has been raised to run that, that Showtime offense. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I do think he's going to be the rookie of the year because everything is in his favor to be, uh, to be rookie of the year, uh, even though I think Josh Jackson's going to be the best out of all of them. Uh, Don't forget Ben Simmons is eligible to be rookie. Well, he, he's eligible, but but I'm saying because of the hype and the pressure, the magnitude that his dad put on him, and then you know going to the Lakers and then the Magic, I just think that he'll have a better shot. You know, look, if he improves the Lakers' win total, you know it doesn't have to be by much, but I you know, but if if he if he gets him to 30 wins, and if by chance, uh, you know, everything Lavar has said so far, he's spoken to existence. If by chance that you know he leads him to a playoff berth. Uh, you know, hell, you that's made, not happening. Well, hey, look, I'm just look. Any look, not a, in the West. A lot of people thought that Levar Ball was talking a lot of craziness, but what happened? His son went to the Lakers, like he said. So, I mean, granted, I'm with you. I don't think that they're gonna make it, but like I said, if 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 that were to happen, he would he would easily win it. So that being said, I do I do like that fit. Now, granted, uh, you know I don't know who else he's going to have as a, you know when the season starts. Now, I tell you one thing before we before I move further, it's going to make the summer league <laughs> very interesting, which means I'm going to have to start watching it. I didn't watch it last year, even though Benson was in it, but this year with all the you know influx of freshmen, they they got drafted 16 in the first round. It's, it's, it, the summer league is going to be interesting. Uh, third, let's see. Third, Josh Jackson, but that's by default. I mean, I'm a big Josh Jackson fan, so he could have went to Milwaukee, and I still would have, I still would have liked that pick. So he can, uh, he can fit in and mesh well defensively. He, he'll, he'll end up being their best player, uh, just because he's got, he's got that type of attitude in it. Um, right, before you go, um, the Suns are interested in Blake Griffin having a meeting this week. By the way, that see that'll work too, and then that means he won't have to put on <laughs> additional weight to play the four. Um, there are two teams that you didn't name, which I think had pretty good drafts. Charlotte has well, well make it three because Portland had three first round draft picks. It's kind of hard to mess that up. But I would also <laughs> say the Sacramento Kings getting uh, getting Fox and getting uh, uh, Harry Giles and and Frank and Frank Mason. And Frank Mason. I yeah. mean, now that yeah. right there, especially you got your point guard position sewed up with with, with Fox and. Uh, and uh, Mason. and Mason for years to come. So, you know, if anything else, you you got your core leadership on the on the on the floor, and so that is going to be perfect for them. Uh, with uh, with with Charlotte, man, I, I swear I forgot who they drafted. Malik but, Monk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, so you put him. You know, so you got a kid. Granted, he's all freshmen, but they come from a culture of winning, as well as uh, John Calipari. Prepares them for the NBA. So even though they they've only had one year, uh, when he gets to Charlotte, he'll already have kind of like that, you know, kind of like that mentality, that winning mentality, where Jordan ain't going to get in his behind. You know, he'll already have it. The person that, of course, we talked about earlier is going to be Dwight Howard. But you get, I'm telling you, man, Charlotte, Charlotte's going to look good. But again, uh, Sacramento, I do, man, I, I love those picks, man, with, yeah. with Fox and. Uh, and Frank Mason and, and Giles. Um, so I, I think overall, and we did say, and we did say, and it ain't Justin, man. It's it's Josh Jackson, Corp. Don't don't, don't disrespect my boy. Uh, He's probably talking about because uh, the Kings got him as well. Too, okay, okay, from, uh, okay, North okay, okay. Well, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. I apologize, Adam. But <laughs> I, was, I saw Justin. Like, hold on, man. We talking about Josh? Yeah. So, but but that being said, I, I do I do like uh, do like the draft. Do like how it turned out and. Uh, you know, we just wait to see what happens, man. Yeah. And I will say before we move on, the reason why I didn't mention the Kings, because, I, I mean, obviously on paper, they had a great draft. But to me, well, hell, on I've paper, always, Philadelphia had a great draft, too, draft well, the full. So. Yeah, but I've <laughs> always looked at the Kings as 
a career a career killer. I mean, everybody that seems to go there, they just well, they it, just fizzle out. Well, I don't so, know. I don't know. It didn't happen with with Vlade. It didn't happen with Mike Bibby. Didn't happen. Oh, you're with going Chris back Webber. ten plus years. Well, hell. What about I mean, recently? Well, look, it'd be They're different. the best guy that drafted well, recently. Those not even there anymore. It, well, it'd be different had you sent the Clippers or something. They have an institutional of of losing. You know, what I mean, Sacramento did have. You know, look, they should have won the title back in '02, but that's another story. Yeah, they got it was rigged. Yeah, they got yeah, they got rigged. So <laughs> you know, so like I said, I'm I'm gonna help you with your history. So you know, <laughs> so what you good? You good, man? Go ahead. All right, you want to go to the next topic? Right? Yeah, let's go, man. Right, look, right. I'm ready We're not, for it, no man. breaks, no breaks. Nah, man, I don't need a break. That's okay, let's do. talk about Phil Jackson. Who? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Phil, the Zen Master. He got hired there <sighs> three years ago. The best thing he's done is draft Porzingis, even though he yeah. flirted with traded him about yeah. a week ago. I was gonna say the best thing that's happened to him was him getting fired, but you're right. Yeah, he did, yeah. He did draft Porzingis, um, so I give him that. Just the Knicks, are just a complete debacle. I mean, I don't even know where to start. I mean. Just get into it with your star player for no reason, uh, spatting out to the media, tweeting. I mean, wh where do you begin? Can you take this one? I'm so frustrated with Phil. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> well, out of respect for what he did on, on the sidelines of coaching, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to jump him that bad. I, I think the worst – one thing I would say about Phil is that he's used to a culture of winning, and I guess, you know, being in New York – he saw how bad it was. It was like, look, if you're going to pay me $12 million a year, I'm going to eat as much of this crap and crow as I can take. And to be honest, I think that that's, uh, that's pretty much what I think he just took it just for the money. Hey, he didn't, he didn't, he, he never had any, any front office experience. So with that being said, I think it was more so just about the money. Look, if, if somebody's going to pay you $60 million for five years to run a team and you had no experience, wouldn't you take it? Oh, yeah, I'm taking that back. Yeah. Definitely taking and so, that back. Now, because, <laughs> and see, here's the thing. Just because you're a great player or a good player doesn't make you a good or a great coach. And just because you're a good or great coach doesn't make you a good or great GM, executive, or anything like that. And so this, is, you know, everybody can't go from player, coach, to executive like, a Larry Bird or or um, uh, Isaiah Thomas, or even a Danny Ainge. Yeah, Danny Ainge, or and to a certain extent, a Doc Rivers. You know, because I'm not I'm I'm not gonna crap on them or harp on them too bad. You're right, fifty. Yeah, exactly, fifty thousand dollars a day. I'm not I'm not gonna carp too bad <laughs> on on um, on uh, 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 Doc Doc because you know because of what happened with uh, with Chris Paul. So with that being said. You know, a, a lot of things could be said about Phil. The stuff with him and Carmelo, I'm not gonna lie, man. I blame that on Carmelo. You putting it all on Melo? I'm putting, yeah, well, yeah, actually, I am. Why? Why so? I, and and I know we, I guess we can kind of bring that into the discussion now, basically because, and I, and I said on my thing earlier, I think of Carmelo Anthony as a loser. And to the extent that, yeah, I know hey, he, he won I, a national championship in college, man. Yeah, come on. Well, <laughs> That shit that that don't translate to 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 the pros. A lot of people won uh, college championships, and yeah, and I'm not gonna overlook that. And yes, I know he's won three Olympic gold medals, but look at the talent that he had. The thing, well, I'm glad you said that before. I'm sorry I had to no, cut you ahead, off because go go I, I gotta get you on no, this go one. Ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You said it doesn't translate, but you just crapped on folks for not winning in college. Come on now. Yeah. I'll Come on it. now. <laughs> yeah, but he has to. He has to. He hadn't played a, a game in the NBA yet. I know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah. Said it doesn't no, translate. No, no, no. But what I said, I didn't say Fultz will lose. I said Fultz doesn't have a record of winning. So I'm saying he's come, he come from a losing culture. They were, what, 9-21 and 21 in Washington. Now, granted, I don't know what kind of talent he showed being 9-21 and 21, that he was a, a number one draft pick over, over Lonzo or Josh or anyone else, but. That's another sketch for another day, but going back to Carmelo, as I'm, and this is what this is. Here's my point with Carmelo. You were a, you won a national title, yes, yeah, freshman year. I watched it. I saw it. Syracuse, yeah. Jim Beheim. I, I can't forget that. Yeah, no, <laughs> they can't either. <laughs> uh, but but that but with that being said, you gotta look at it, man. When he got drafted, he was in the same class with LeBron, D Wade, and the rest of them. When he got drafted. They all initially that night they they made a commitment to themselves that they were gonna you know play together. They had the opportunity, but uh, when they when they signed contract or contract extensions, they were supposed to do it for just four four years. Carmelo did it for five, so that kind of messed up the whole big three. Because when LeBron was a free agent that summer, he was he uh, he Dwayne Wade 
and uh, and Chris Bosh and, and Chris. No, not Chris. I used my Mello. Mello. Okay, they were okay. all. They were supposed to be the original big three in in Miami, and because he had that fifth year, you know, he went for the money. That brought in Chris Bosh, made him the big three. Now, he had a chance. I believe it was last year or, the, or, or two seasons ago. He was a free agent. He decided to to resign. In New York. Now, it'd be different had New York been in the playoffs, you know, the few years leading to that free agency, but they had been losing. They blew. Now, he supposedly had got tired of losing. Well, I don't care how much money they paid me. If I'm tired of losing, I'm going to go. Look, that's why people crapped on Durant, and they were winning. I didn't crap on them. Look, the dude wanted to go chase the ring. Now, we compare great players to other great players. That's why, you know, I, I kind of get mad at, at people like Stephen A. Smith when they say, well, he's a superstar of the highest. So, no, he's a star. Superstars are winners or they, quote, unquote, win MVP. Now, I'm not, I'm not sold on Westbrook being a superstar just yet, but he won a league MVP. So I'm going to grant him that. You know, so, that, I mean, that, that, that puts you above because you're the best player above everyone. Kevin so, Durant won MVP, too. Yeah, and he's got a title for it now, too, don't he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, big difference. <laughs> big difference. But, I'm, but what I'm saying is that you can't, you can't be – a quote unquote superstar, and you and you can't lead your team to wins or your team to victory. And when's the last time you've been in the playoffs? Who was that? Carmelo's team. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I can't remember. And, and so and and so, he signed a, a contract extension. I believe it was for four for five years for one hundred twenty five million dollars. I can't feel sorry for you, dude. Yeah. So so you chose money over. You know, pe- people can say what you want about. Well, he, you know, he's playing with his boy, he's super team. I don't give a damn. If I, if, if my soul first, look, you already got money because you got money from your first two contracts. So you got money. You got endorsements being in New York. So if it's about money, say it's about money. But don't, don't make it seem. Don't make it. Don't make me feel like you're trying to win a championship when your track record hasn't proven. That you're that you're going up for a championship, because if that was the case, one, it wouldn't matter if Phil is in the upstairs or who's who's playing, you're gonna try to win. Michael Jordan, when he had when he had Phil Collins, uh, I'm sorry, Doug Collins as his coach, he was still trying to ball out, whether he had the teammates around him or, or not, he was still balling. Now he couldn't he couldn't get over them until Phil Jackson came in and Scott, and then you kind of put the pieces in, in part. But you don't see that. You don't. Yeah, he can score, but you don't see the quote unquote killer instinct now. I don't want to get off on a tangent because I could easily talk about how Melo, if he joined someone like LeBron, his game would change and he, he as a player would change. But as long as he's in New York, I just think of him as a loser. Yeah, and before we get to where Melo should go and possible destinations about Phil, I agree with you. He clearly didn't want to be there. I mean, if you remember right, when they were like trying to give him the meat there, it was like pulling hair, you know, <laughs> so they just gave him that bag and he couldn't resist it. But you could tell he obviously didn't have – too much interest in being the Knicks first president. Of all, first of all, he never traveled. Okay. Yeah. 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 When he did travel, it was to LA to see his girls. So yeah, I mean, yeah. So now it. he can go back to LA and live his peaceful life and put his feet in the air and smoke cigars. But <laughs> about Melo, since we kind of got in him already, I do believe Melo's gone. It's just a matter of if, are the Knicks going to trade him or is he going to get a buyout? There's reports saying if he were to get bought out, he would go to Cleveland. But the Rockets are trying to get him via trade. Those are the main two teams after Melo right now. And to me, the best fit would be Cleveland. Because first of all, you get to stay in the East. So you pretty much have a guarantee of going to the finals. Melo's never been to the finals before. Get to play with one of your best friends in LeBron James and one of the best passers in LeBron James. Kyrie, now he'll have, he'll have to adjust his game a lot if Melo goes there. No, not really. You don't think so? No. I, th- I think so, just a little bit, because he'll have to share the ISO opportunities. Because Melo, he's going to have to ISO at times. He's not just going to sit there on the perimeter like Kevin Love and just say, hey, give me the ball, I'm going to shoot threes. It's going to be times where Kyrie is going to have to feed the ball to Melo and, hey, get out of my way. Well, that's what, well, here's the thing. They've played together, whether it's an all-star game or uh, even the Olympics, because uh, I, think, I think they played together in the last Olympics. So, I mean, they have a general idea of how to play with one another. And, of course, when you're playing with LeBron James – you're going to have lots of practices and, of course, walkthroughs and stuff like that. I mean, I don't have – it w- It would be easy for Melo to mesh well with Cleveland versus him going somewhere else to where like you don't Houston. have – Well, he can mesh with Houston because of Chris Paul. 
because of Chris Paul's leadership and you know Chris Paul being a coach on the floor and, and can put Carmelo in the right spot. The question is whether or not it is how Carmelo will be able to move without the ball. And trust me, I, I, I could see him in Cleveland, and that would be the way for it to work out because obviously – you got to stop thinking about it. something must be wrong with Kevin Love. Where hell they can't they can't get rid of this guy, you know? Because I mean seriously, because yeah. I mean they've been trying to trade him all this time. As soon as the finals end, and they still can't get a take on him. Now maybe things will change once free agency starts this weekend, and we'll see what happens. Uh, but with that being said, I do think that you can that if Melo goes to Cleveland, one you won't see the Melo that's in New York. You won't see the loser Melo that's in New York nah, because nah. well because you get you get him there, you get him. In a culture that has been used to, you know, winning or being in a winning environment the last three seasons, uh, so you get them there. Like you said, you're gonna be playing with your best friend, and your best friend is is, is gonna be having you. I mean, he's basically gonna be making sure that, you know, you on point, and he's not gonna put you in a situation for you to fail because friends don't do stuff like that. So, uh, again, I can see him going there. Real friends don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, real friends don't do yeah. that. <laughs> so yeah, I, I I can see him going to uh, to Cleveland versus uh, versus Houston. Or yeah, myself. I'm glad you and, brought and, up and and, and and just let me say yeah, uh, he he could only get to Houston via trade if he approved it because he has a no trade right in right, his contract. right right so, right unless he's bought out and then decides to go to a team and play for the league minimum then that then uh, that would be how he would play for Cleveland. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up. Um, the Olympic Mellow, because in the Olympics, Mellow does play a lot different when he's around super talent like that. He does play off the ball well, and he's a catch-and-shoot guy. So when I think about it more, I do think he could fit, fit seamlessly with Cleveland. Kind of similar, not exactly like KD and Golden State, because the Warriors passing is just unworldly. But I do think it could be somewhat similar to that. I agree with you. I mean, I, I really... Don't have much to add on that one. Yeah, can we take some phone calls? <laughs> sure, man. Look, if you want to give us a call, you can do so. Give us a call at 816-372-2170. We'll put the number up here for you right quick just so you can get a chance to hear it and uh, give us a call right now. Call in at 816-372-2170. Give us your name. Uh, of course, even though it's a podcast, there will be no cursing. I will. I am quick. With the uh, with the dot, you know, with the touch tone, uh, hang up on you. But if you want to give us a call, please feel free to do so, and uh, uh, we'll take your calls. And you can join in on, on the discussion, talk about Chris Paul, talk about Carmelo, talk about the draft. Who you think uh, will win the NBA Finals next year? Is Golden State still the favorite? You think they're still the favorite? As of right now, definitely. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so, uh, of course, free agency is starting this week as well. So, um, you know, where do you think certain players will end up? And you know. When it's all said and done, which team is going to be the one that, that can take on and knock off the one and only Golden State Warriors? So uh, until we get a call, man, let's uh, let's what's the other topic you wanted to bring? Um, up? Well, let's talk about free agency a little bit. Mm. Um, I believe one of the main pickups I see happening for sure because there's a lot of uncertainty, but I'm pretty confident this will happen. Gordon Hayward will be a Boston Celtic. I do believe that wholeheartedly. Just the fact that Brad Stevens is there, the guy that he played under when he was at Butler. It's just a natural fit. He just seems like a Boston type of guy. <laughs> I just think Boston would rally around a guy like Gordon Hayward. You could team him up with Isaiah Thomas, uh, Avery Bradley. I just think it will be Jason a good Tatum. fit. Jason Tatum. I and mean, that's funny. crazy. He'd probably come off the bench. Talk. Nah, cause he, if, first, they, if they get Hayward, where's well, he going to start at? Uh, well, you, you got to find someplace for him because their number one draft pick is coming off the bench. I mean, you go, I guess you're not to put him at the four, if anything, because they still got Al Horford. So Al Horford at the five. Yeah, yeah, that is a loaded lineup, you know. But again, it, like you said, it's a matter of meshing. Because yeah, if you bring, if you, if you bring, uh, uh, if you bring him in, you know, how is Isaiah Thomas? Because you, you got to remember, man, he's a point guard, but he's a shooting guard in the point guard body. So you know, he has he has to make everyone better on top of, you know, he still has to get his own, you know his own number of shots and stuff. That's why I love the Gordon Hayward pickup because he's a guy that's capable of playmaking and handling the ball at times. Yeah. He's a very underrated passer. He could bring the ball up at two. He did that a lot at Butler and he does that at Utah as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm interested to in see how how it all sh- how it all shakes out. Now, I will say this: now everybody is ra- is talking about Paul George and you know and, and these uh, players for next year's NBA free agency. But I'm telling you, man, it's just there's nothing really exciting about it. So let's see who we got here. Oh, we got a phone call. We got a phone call. Caller, who is this? 
This is Josh. Josh, what's going on with you? What, what do you want to talk about? What's going on, guys? Hey, you um, how you doing, it Josh? It feels out. Good, Mark. Good, Mark. Um, it feels out in um, New York already. How long till the cow rumors start for real? I mean, I know we got an ESPN report, but do you guys think there any truth to it? What about Cal being the president of the Knicks? Yeah, there's already a Sports Center report that um, Cal has See, reached out to New it. York about being coach and president. Wow. Um, <laughs> man, it's like we get a Cal rumor every summer. Um, I don't put too much stock into it, man. I think Cal, he, he's a god in Lexington, man. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he literally can do nothing wrong there. He gets the top recruiting classes every year. Now, I will say the Knicks will probably throw him a hefty offer if this is true. And that could be hard think, to pass I think up. The only, I think the only thing that keeps him in Lexington really is his son is there on a four-year scholarship. I can't see him. What, and his you, wife has said he's not leaving until his son's gone. What year is his son going to enter this year? This this is his. This will be his sophomore year. Oh, okay. Well, that that and I would say this one Kentucky is already. I think they had already signed him before to a long-term contract. I think to twenty twenty-four. So if that's the case. One, you'd have – see, <laughs> I'll put it like this. Yeah, he just signed a two-year extension last year for $8 million a year. Yeah, so so you got something about it. Uh, Kyler Perry, he is smart, but on, on this one, I think James Jones might be a little bit smart because, one, you'd have to buy him out – you'd have to buy – you'd have to buy the university out of that contract or buy him out of that contract. And and then on top yeah, of Calipari has a no buyout clause. Like he doesn't have to pay the University of Kentucky a dime if he leaves. No, 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 no. But I'm saying, but but I'm saying the Knicks may have to buy out that contract with the university, not not Calipari. Calipari could probably believe. Oh, so so, but okay. But I but but I, I do I do see what you're saying. Now the funny thing is that how much would you actually offer? Because if if you pay Phil Jackson sixty million dollars, I don't think Dolan is going to make that type of mistake again. And there, and there, and there yeah. has been there has been talk that he wants to he wants to talk to the GM or the president of the of the Raptors, uh, and I can't think of the guy's name because it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a funny name, and well, it's funny oh, for me because yeah, I can't because yeah. I can't pronounce it. Yeah, he's a funny guy too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how funny he is. Yeah, but, uh, what so, is the guy's so, name is? So, Josh, do you think it's realistic? Masi Ujiri. So, I'm sorry. Say again. Uh, do you think it's realistic that he'll leave, or you think he's going to stay at least till his son graduates? No, I think it's your your yearly Cal, you know, your yearly Cal rumor. The closest Cal Perry ever came to leaving was whenever LeBron James went back to Cleveland. He was offered over over 150 million, and the Twins decided to stay at the last second, and that's the only thing that kept him. Oh, he told whoa, whoa, them, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, did you say 150 million? Yeah. Yes. Man, I almost cussed on here again. I'm sorry. No, if, <laughs> with. Go ahead. With, That's with, with LeBron coming to town too, you know. So he knew he was going to win. Oh, he just man. he promised the Twins he'd come back if they came back, and I think that's what failed us. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you, some half million to fifty million dollars. Why everybody leaving with me? <laughs> they're going. They're, they're <laughs> yeah. going. They're going wherever. I didn't say it was the right decision. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, and I put like this, but to answer your question honestly, uh, it, it does seem as though he reached out, but you know, I, I think the problem is that. You know, if you call it Perry, you can't you can't be out recruiting these players, even if most of them, of course, are going to be one and done. But you can't talk, try to have them bring them in just to leave them or whatever. And because you know, because then you got to think about the players that you're bringing in and what what your word means. Because at the end of the day, your word has to count for something. And so, with that being yeah. said, I you know, it would be nice. But but again. What does he offer as, as a as a team president, general manager? You know, because being like, see, like, I'm. Go ahead. I, I'm I'm with you. Like I'm biggest Cal fan in the world, Kentucky fan. You know how that goes. Like I deny the rumors, the accusations, all that stuff. So we'll we'll see how that goes in ten years. But Cal is not the kind of coach that you see in the NBA. He's one of these coaches. He screams at his players all game long, and you can't do that in the NBA. He tried it with the, the Nets. It just don't work. And I don't. And I and I think that's why he won't go back. I think he's afraid of failure again. Yeah, you're right about that. And the thing is. With, with with this cash of players, you have to have one. You basically got to have a championship ring to be able to yell at these players. I mean, Eric Spolstra, you know, was able to do that with LeBron afterwards. You know, after they won the title. But you know, you got to have you got to be a Doc Rivers, a Popovich, yeah, Phil Jackson, someone like that 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 carries that cachet around. And granted, yeah, it's easy when you can yell at college kids who you control their scholarships and stuff like that. 
versus grown men who, you know, I mean, just yeah. ask LaTrell Spree how, how that worked out for some of the coaches he played for. Yeah, to me, there's only one college coach that can get away with that, and it's Coach K, if he were to go to the NBA, because he has a relationship with them coaching on the Olympic teams and stuff like that. I think he's the only one that can get away with that. Yeah. So, man, hey, hey look, man, we thank you for your call, man, and uh, uh, feel free to join the big guy, Mark Gunnels, next week on the show. Oh, we sure will. Hey, right, you thanks, guys Josh. Appreciate right, take it, care. man. Take care, Josh. Hey, thanks, Mark. All right. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, we talked about it, man. It's, uh, it's, it's very interesting to see how this how it all plays out. Yeah, we got a few minutes left, guys. If you want to call in at 816. Yeah, we'll, take another, we'll take another call before we get yeah. out of here. 816-372-2170. It's 816-372-2170. Call in. But you know, before we take another call, man, let me let me just let me put on my journalism hat right quick, man. First of all, how you feel about your first show? Ah, I feel pretty good. I ain't gonna lie, I was really nervous. Uh, first one, get the kinks out the way, but I feel a lot more comfortable as the time has gone on. <laughs> you should, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. There's nothing, yeah. nothing to be, you know, nothing to be too nervous about. I grant, I know, the, you know, the camera's on or whatever. Yeah, I so. got a lot of people tuning in, family, friends. <laughs> They're probably blowing my phone up right now. <laughs> yeah, well, well, the one thing that uh, because I know, you know, we talked about it and. Um, I said I wasn't going to do this, uh, but I'm, I'm going I'm to put you on blast, but it's a good blast because okay. uh, uh, you came in last week. Uh, of course, uh, you're a Lincoln alum. I am a Lincoln alum, and uh, I was telling us- Shout out to the Blue Tigers, man. Always, all day, every day. Um, there's, a, there's a phrase that, that, a, that a gentleman that my mentor used with me called each one, teach one. And so we were uh, talking about some stuff last week, and I told him how you came in, and um, you know, I think you reached out to me. It was something I think I may have been doing a live stream or something I, that you reached out to me uh, about helping you with your podcast, getting you started. I, you know, I told you, yeah, I would do it. You know, I don't have a, I, I don't have a problem helping people get started or helping people do anything, especially if you have that drive. It's funny I have a gentleman. Uh, right up the street at one of the restaurants, mad like, man, how are you gonna do a show with him? And I've been asking, I said, because he came over to the house. I'm <laughs> like, he made the initial effort. Had yeah. you made that effort, I would help you as well. I said, but you didn't. He did, so I'm helping him. I say all that to say, man, you know, never forget where you came from. Never forget the bridge that brought you over. If and when you make it in this business, make sure that you help someone else get started and and make their um, uh, help them, you know, transition into it, you know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna help you. You know, however I can, how long, how long I, how long I can. I know you had uh, some concerns about some equipment or whatever. I'm gonna bless you tonight with with uh, with this mixer that that we're using, so you can uh, use some stuff. I'm gonna bless you with a microphone as well, so you can, you know, um, I appreciate uh, that. Man. You know, do do some stuff with the house. Uh, I've already helped you with the software, so when we get off the air, I'm gonna help you. Uh, you know, get all that together, so so you can, uh, you know, do it from the house and whenever, whenever, you know, whenever you decide to do so. So I'm going to help you out and, and get you started. But I just want you to remember, you know, and this really in for, for sure, but just to say, never forget, to, you know, those who, who helped you along the way because someone is going to be reaching out to you in 20, 25 years and will ask you for uh, some advice and assistance. Make sure that you don't get too high on the pedestal or whatever, that you can help, you know, bring someone over and help them as well. I really appreciate that, man. Yeah, I definitely want to give back when I get a chance. I really appreciate your opportunity. Um, it's just great to have a mentor like you, and I'm gonna take everything I can and pass it on, man. We gotta keep passing it along. Oh yeah, but in the meantime, man, let's get let's take another call, or if not, we are just gonna kick rocks and uh, and uh, no, actually, you know, we're gonna kick rocks anyway because we gotta do something else after the show. So uh, if we if we don't get another caller within 60 seconds, we out of here. So yeah, clock is uh, sticking because one, I gotta eat, man. Somebody <laughs> somebody gotta bring me some Gates barbecue. Yeah, some, somebody call in, man. I know y'all watching. Eight one six. Yeah, we got, Three, a, lot of, seven, got two, a lot of views. 2170. But you know what ended up happening? Is that people get shot. See, people get Twitter and Facebook uh, uh, boldness and stuff. But then when you tell them to invite them to call in. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. So <laughs> shout out to Josh. But no, they, they, they don't have to call it for real. But uh do want to uh, thank you for allowing me to be your first guest on the show. Um, and... Uh, you know, I mean, if nothing else, man, I think I think uh, I think you did pretty good on your first on your first thing, man. And, All right, uh, I appreciate you know, get a chance to work this thing out and tell everybody again. One, uh, let everybody know how they can how they can uh, follow you or whatever on Facebook and Twitter and stuff. So they can yeah, you guys can follow me on every social media: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Mark A. Gunnels. 
Uh, you can follow me on Snapchat as well, Mark A. Gunnels. I'm everywhere, man. Um, appreciate Literally. everybody just tuning in tonight. It really means a lot to me. It's going to get better as we go, and we're going to keep grinding and getting it. And just be great, everybody. Um,